so many things that we could talk about here. There's so many directions we could take this in. I mean, maybe we should take it into a little bit of a role play for to to to, 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 to just to illustrate this a little bit more for the, for the people watching. So. How do we do this then? Do you want me to be the, the hot girl? Or yeah, do you yeah. want to be the hot girl? <laughs> Probably I should be the girl, right? And you yeah, should. Yeah, yeah we, okay. We do. But before, before we're doing the role play, what I want to emphasize here as well is, is one of the best conversational people, the best people, people um, in dating or, or in, in, in other fields. But when it comes to conversations, is the best one actually make make conversation where the guy and the girl is talking about the girl mm. so that is i want to emphasize this one so when i'm speaking with the girl i'm trying to make the whole conversation about her so she might talk 60 percent i might talk 40 percent but it's mostly about her mm. and the only thing i talk about me is when i'm relating things uh to what she's answered to, a, to an extent of about 20 percent so yeah. because we don't want to just sit and don't say anything we want to have a conversation it should be like you and her having cons- conversation about her that is like the main thing mm. really mm. Yeah. okay okay yeah cool okay now that's uh point taken and um yeah i mean there's a couple of other things i want to ask you about the uh well actually all right before just before we do this then so what would you say about the the classic sort of London day game model uh, approach to this, where the guy might go in and say, "Hey, you look really nice. Good to, you know, had to come over and say hi." She's like, "Oh, hi." And it's like, "But you know what? You look Italian. I, I reckon you're from Rome." And she says, "No, actually, I'm not from Rome. I'm, I'm actually Spanish. I'm from Barcelona." And then the guy says, oh, "Barcelona, really? Wow. Do you know what? That reminds me of this time I was in Barcelona just a three three weeks ago, and we had this crazy time, and we were at this party, and bloody bloody blah. And he tells a bit of a story." And he's waiting for her to sort of get hooked. You know, she's observing his persona. You know, he can hold the room. He's got this command yep. presence. He's telling that he's, you know, he's adept at speaking. And hopefully at some point she hooks in and she goes, oh, that's really cool. So are you from London? Or she asks a question or something, shows she's invested. What's your take on that as a model as opposed to what, to what you're saying? Can the two things coexist or is, it, is your model sort of... Because your model seems to be much more not holding court as the guy but much more putting the focus on her from the off what i see here a little bit is like um, if you really can pull it off i think it can actually be like a, an additional part of opening the bottles you see right. opening the bottle but yeah. that's what it is it's just opening the bottle because eventually you still need to go into a normal conversation with her yes, yes. you know so it's just a pro-launched initial approach uh, ritual basically so okay. it can definitely uh, coexist but if you don't know it and you're trying to like stage perform it you see what i mean yeah, yeah? yeah. Uh, if you can do it authentically and it looks really authentically just go ahead and do it if you can't do it i don't think it's much of a loss at all right. if, if you just go on with with you know with the direct approach the direct opening and then direct is like Okay, so Vanessa, tell me, what do you think about the city? Or what do you think about this bar? Or what do you think? I think that is like, um, I mean, you, you go long way with it. Because, I mean, the main thing here is to get into a conversation as soon as possible that goes under the surface. Yeah. You see? Yeah. So, so that's actually the main part. The, the London Day game, and specifically when it comes to this uh, association part, mm. being a little bit playful, being a little bit funny, do has its place. But... If you can get into a conversation anyway, then all those things doesn't matter that much. It's yeah. uh, it, it's not well, where it, 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 it can get her attention, but that is not where things are happening in that yeah. sense. Well, okay. So I suppose the argument they would people who pro, you know mm-hmm. propagate this that those ideas would would make is okay, but you need to give her some value up front and don't make her do too much of the work. So if you go over and you you start asking her questions, you're kind of you haven't really given anything apart from you've given her a compliment, but you haven't really given her very much. And then you're sort of asking her things and you're, make, you're kind of yep, making her do the work. So, so what, would you, what would you respond to that? I would respond to that in the terms of how you ask the question and how many questions you ask. Because uh, unless you're schooled in to make the topic in a deeper level, to actually listen to what she said and, and take the cues of what she said and work, work with this one, I mean, it's not until then where you're actually going under the surface. But if you're not schooled in that way, if you, if you never had 
any kind of um, course or any kind of studies in in uh, in basic communication you will not know how to actually go there you don't know how to get there so what are we doing then we're doing what is written in our dna is to ask surface based question that leads to uh, a conversation that is based on exchange of information mm -hmm. and the girl doesn't want to exchange that much information so it become like very platonic and then it just dies out mm -hmm. where do you come from okay what uh, what do you do okay so uh, how old are you okay how many pets do you have i mean yeah. that kind of questions is what we we do when we don't know what to ask about yes you see so we are now taking two variables into consideration here it's like we take one person that doesn't know how to ask the right question and go into depth but he know how to ask questions in general yeah. and we're taking one guy they schooled asking questions and then suddenly stop and get into depth yes. and talk about things that that matters in conversation i mean th there's a huge gap between those two yeah you see yeah. and uh, and i get the point like oh but you should not ask so many questions because if you ask those superficial questions too f too early then she will not listen to them. Mm. So what should we do? We should be a little bit playful before we can ask those superficial questions. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I'm my system or the scientific community system. We don't go that far. We don't ask, you know, like lots of superficial questions. We ask like one close ended maybe, and then we're going up with follow up questions and we're going to get into depth and talk about things that actually matters. Okay. We're gravitating towards things that are genuinely interesting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Point taken. I get. Yeah. You get. It. Yeah. The point. yeah. So, um, well, let's go into a bit of a role play. So afterwards, I want to talk about some of the results of this because mm -hmm. obviously yeah. you've seen some fantastic results, and I know the yeah, guys yeah. that you've you've spoken to have seen great results as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. But should we should we just do this as a as a, as a little bit of a role play? Yeah. Yeah. With me okay, as the girl. The, la the last thing. One misconception when it comes to being a good communicator is that we have to speak very good about things. Yeah. That is wrong. The number one most powerful skill you have in communication is actually listening. And not only listening, you have to active listening, you have to have a lot of reflective listening and empathetic listening skills. That is actually the main part of being a good conversationalist. Mm. Really, mm. it's about listening. And people don't, most people think that, oh, a good conversationalist is more based on on stage rhetoric of how I say things and, and, and how much energy I bring to the table. No, it's not about this one. For an untrained eye, they may think like, oh, but this is just quite, you know, quite normal conversation that doesn't have so many spikes. But for a trained eye, they will say directly like, wow, this is a conversation that leads to connection, really leads to connection with everything, including this one. Mm. And uh, the funny thing is like if you want to optimize we're not talking about only good if you want to optimize the connection with the girl they're going to lead to sex relationship and everything like this one the conversation doesn't doesn't look that spectacular yeah really if you can forget about this wow this um, this stage for more uh, performance things because so many other dating dating i would not say dating coach maybe but but uh, in a dating scene yeah they think that everything has to be in this particular form that yes. is that is creating the alpha etc etc but it's not true actually yeah yeah no you're it's, right it's not true at all yeah you're right and it's it's kind of i think it's partly youtube is a double-edged sword because on the one hand it's great because it's, it's brought a lot of knowledge to, to millions of people but at the same time there's a tendency to want to make things look sensational you know to be entertaining and so it's a guy and he stops a, a woman and she's riding a tricycle and juggling and all this kind of thing you know and it, it doesn't need to be like that the the best interactions really on the surface look fairly mundane or you wouldn't really know something was really was really happening under the surface exactly as, as a, for the train for the for the untrained eye they would not notice much actually yeah. they were thinking like oh shouldn't shouldn't he you know take something from the pocket and start you know like doing something fun with three balls or something they would feel like but i don't know what's happening here mm. and where's the the cool alpha and the cool jokes and the cool bantering of course they are included in into the normal conversation but it is not in the way that people think yeah you yeah, see, yeah. and when you make a small joke about something that is connected with her on a deeper level, it will give so much more, so much more uh, uh, positive result than you coming with a great joke, mm. but on a superficial level. Yeah. That is not really connected with her, but you're taking something from thin air and make a great joke rhetorically. Wow, wow, that was really fun. But it's not connected with her, cannot yeah. even be matched with something 
small but is connected with her yeah. you see it's like yeah. it's like uh, day and night yeah yeah good stuff all right well um without further ado then shall i be oh jesus um <laughs> we're getting getting intimate already um romantic lighting so without further ado um shall i be the the cute girl and um i guess i'm just you know i don't know whatever i'm in the street or whatever and you stop me and then we take it from there okay excuse me hello i know this is spontaneous but uh, i think you look really nice and i had to come as a hi to you i'm michael what's your name georgina Georgina, nice to meet you, Georgina. So, uh, <laughs> so Georgina, tell me, are you from here? I'm actually no, I'm actually not from uh, Poland. No. Okay, so you're a tourist here in Poland. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's okay, so um, you as a tourist, tell me, what do you think about Gdynia? Well, I haven't seen very much of it so far, but it looks really nice. I, you've got the sea, you've got some nice car cafes, restaurants. It seems like a really nice tourist place for sure. Okay, so. Uh, you like the sea, you like, you know, like everything that's within the city, but tell me a little bit more like uh, about the nice part. What is nice with those things? Can you, can you uh, help me to understand it a little bit better? Well, it's, it just seems like somewhere to go and have some, to relax and to be able to clear your mind a little bit. That's what I like about this place. Okay, because when I look at Gdynia, uh, as I know, I find it's a very relaxed place as well. I mean, we have Sopot, we have Gdansk, they're like more touristic vibe but specifically Gdynia yeah. has this like little bit of a local vibe that I like like this relaxation and and this kind of thing but then um, you said you said like um, that you like Gdynia because of relaxation like you feel relaxed yeah. here can you can you elaborate a little bit more about what you think um, relaxation actually means uh, yeah. what do you do when you want to relax well I, I'm from London and it's really busy city and it's very you know crazy all the time there's just hot crowds of people and people are just focused on work and when I come somewhere like here it just feels like there's fewer people okay the yeah. pace of life seems to be slower you're by the sea it just feels like you could just relax a little bit and just let out your anxiety so what I'm hearing now is like you are actually a small city person more than a big city person is that any true in it well, I do love the big city, but sometimes you need to just get away from them. From, from you know? Okay, I see. So, just out of it, what is it that you like with London more than Gdynia, if you have to say something? Well, I mean, there's, you know, I mean, there's, there's just loads to do there. There's like theatre, there's uh, museums, there's just loads of culture. You know, all the stores you can need. Every, I mean, just so much going on. Um, Opera, you know, anything that you want, you can you can get there really. So you like places with lots of activity. That's yeah, what you mean. Yeah, 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 I do. Okay, I do. so if since you are from London and there's lots of activity in London, but we have other great cities as well around the world. So uh, if you can actually go to another city that is similar to London, since you like this kind of vibrant lifestyle, what would that be? Well, I mean, I've always liked New York City, um, but I would like to go to. I mean, you know, I'd, li I'd like to go to Mumbai. I think that would be really fun, you know? Okay, really okay. Yeah, yeah. So, is it, you know, m when I think about Mumbai, I think a little bit like uh, like a contrast of cultures. Mm. And uh, I can feel a little bit like, uh, since you like the big city and you like the big city girl, London and New York has like pretty much similarity of, of cities, even though they are like in different locations yeah. of the world. S but now you mentioned Mumbai. And mm -hmm. I can feel a little bit like you like the contrast of, of lifestyles, basically, and still a vibrant city. Tell me more about the, uh, what is it that actually intrigues you with Mumbai compared with London? Well, I mean, I think it's good, like you said, I mean, London and New York quite similar, really, in, in many ways. I think it, I really like to ex explore different cultures and find out about how different, you know. Man, you, you, sound, you sound adventurous, yeah? I like that, of course, I'm very, I'm very adventurous myself. I mean... I think it's boring to just stay in one place all the time. Even mm. though you can live in one place, it's nice to actually have a, a comprehensive life and actually being around the world and just try new things. Yeah. Is, that, is that what you mean for you as well? Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely diff different kinds of food, different kinds of experiences, different kinds of people. I just think, you know, it's a bit boring if you just spend your whole life in one sort of environment the whole time, you know? Yeah, yeah I agree with you. I agree yeah. with you. Definitely, I feel the same thing. So let's say that you will be in Mumbai tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, what, what, what is the first thing you would do? I'd probably go and check out some of the crazy like markets and things like that and go and buy some street food, well, you know, go and buy some street food, 
with uh, being, being careful, of course. Um, okay, and yeah, yeah, maybe try to check out some of the some of the nightlife and everything. Yeah, just just see how the city ticks, really. You know. Okay. So when you when you mention nightlife, I guess you like partying a lot. You like uh, you know big events and this kind of thing. Well, I like to yeah, I like to go to uh, I like to go and listen to new music. You know, I like to go to listen go to maybe a club, you know, or like a bar where they're playing like different kinds of music. Okay. Um, I like to see people go, you know, I like that energy. Energy. Um, yeah, yeah. From time to time, not the whole time, but from time to time. I but like the, when you say energy, uh, when you're thinking about nightlife and energy, are you thinking mostly about bars and clubs then? Yeah, I think so. Or in the street as well. You know, in the street when people are out, out and about having a drink, having a, having a talk, having a party, that's really nice as well. You know, in the summer in, in Europe, it's it's very nice. Wow. Around, yeah. Yeah. I can definitely see that you know this kind of vibrant, a lot of things going on in your life is something that you value a lot. And I mean, mm. I must say that I like traveling a lot as well. I like to try new things, and and you being able to to actually do it, and you being being uh, here in Gdynia for relaxation as well, and you want to do a lot of other things in the in the future is something that I find really interesting. I mean, I find you really, really interesting. Well, thank you. Really. <laughs> but I have to say something. I have to be somewhere very, very soon. But uh, I mean, I find you really attractive and I would like to have a drink later today, perhaps. So um, what do you say? Yeah, cool. I mean, we could, maybe we can exchange numbers. And, uh, yeah, great. Yeah. Okay. So do you have WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. WhatsApp, let's, yeah. Let, let's exchange WhatsApp. Okay. Good and stuff. then we do it. Yes. So that is like uh, now uh, since um, I'm seeking clarification, sort of, but uh, since you are so energetic and you speak about so many things, I just go almost immediately into personal mode. And I can see directly like what you like is like yeah. vibrant lifestyle. You do like relaxation sometimes, but that is not the main part. You're here because of that, but you like a bigger style. Because when I asked you about, um, about London, you just exploded mm. in your body language, this kind of thing. So I just have to go with that one. Yes, yes. Well, that's interesting. I mean, how much would you say observing body language is important for yes, this? A, so, uh, we can say this one. It's like once you have the fundamental down, yeah. and that can be pretty straightforward in the beginning. Yeah. So, you, I mean, you don't have so many room to be flexible. Mm. So, what I did now was like using my maximum flexibility in order to get a little bit like what is it that you actually like. So, for the untrained eyes now, I was just asking you a, a, a rampage of questions, but I actually went to like like uh, what I used to say, like the first layer of deep conversation. We have like different layers, but I, I, I went slightly in depth, but didn't do much more than that. Mm. Now in the initial conversation, but we still talk about you. Yeah. And I re reflecting in a way that me and you are talking about you now. Mm. And I can definitely see like, uh, like the value you have in life in general. And I mm. try to make you explain what you think about things two to three times before I ask for the number. Right. I want I want to have that kind of vibe between you and me before I closing it. No, yeah. That's, yeah, so that's interesting. So as a takeaway for the for the people watching, so you're saying two to three times you're what asking for that piece of information about the per, about them? Or? Yeah, uh, so what I would like to do in order to uh, to uh, make her feel like I'm the person that are genuinely interested in her is to make her explain what you think about things in two to three different areas or, oh, or things. Yeah. So what do you think about Gdynia? I think it's good. You think it's that? I think it's this. Okay, so uh, what do you think about relaxation? What, what is it actually that mm. you're doing when you want to relax? Okay, blah, 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 blah. And then, okay, but you said also you're from London. That's like the opposite from relaxation. So what mm. do you think about that? Oh, what? And so now I came with actually more than two or three things. But I yeah. want to have two to three things on the table where the girl is explaining what she think about things in order to keep the dopamine level up. Yeah. And then and then after that we can actually like like end it there. Okay. Because most of the time when you're doing day game approaches, you don't have that much time. True. You can go for True. insta insta game insta dates and you can you can actually try to pull off, you know, like pull home or whatever you want to do very very quickly. But that cannot be as a rule. It's more like yeah. an exception of the rule. Yeah. So if you're yeah. going to follow the rule, you want to end it on the high note in order to set up a date later. And on, yeah. the, on, on the date, however, the conversation during a date is also slightly different from a conversation after the initial approach. You yes. try to just like, you know, feel out a little bit what she thinks about, and then you want to like finish it in the high notes, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 